Well then, Frumple, that was quite the case, wasn't it? Oh, indeed so. Already made the evening edition, don't you know? I picked up a copy when I went to buy the boat ticket. We'll be quite the heroes, I think. Hopefully they don't dwell too much on the part where one of the weasel gang cracked you over the head with a pool cue and nearly made off with all the gold, eh? Huh. Wretched blighter caught me from behind. Just not cricket, is it? Still, all worked out in the end, my friend, and just in time too, as you have this party with Admiral Gilfrey to attend. Look, who is this chap anyway, Winklebottom? Oh, Gilfrey's an old school friend of mine, top of his class, went on to become an admiral, then latterly undertook a number of privately funded expeditions to all four corners of the globe. Bit of a swat then, eh? We have no time for this sort at my school. <laughs> Evidently so, my friend. Right, let's get this boat ticket and be on our way. Where is the ticket anyway, Frumple? Oh, I slipped it into the newspaper for safekeeping. Winklebottom cracks the case. A touch sensational, but they appear to have got most of the salient facts correct. Never mind all that. What do they say about me? Ah, well, let me see. Yes, here it is. Lord Winklebottom was assisted, as ever, by his associate, Mr. Frumple. Mr? Dash it all, I didn't spend eight years in medical school to be called Mr. Bunch of bloody hacks. Well, never mind that now, old boy. We have to get going if we're to catch this boat before nightfall. No, I'm quite vexed now. I shan't leave until I've had a fresh cup of tea to calm me down. This one's practically tepid. Oh, very well. I'll make you a fresh cup. The pot should be ready now. Ah, here's the ticket. I'll keep hold of this for now. I'll take this, but for the old bones, you know. Now to pour some out for the good doctor. I've got the milk in the cup. And in with the tea. Here you are then, a nice fresh cup of tea. Ah, uh, that's much better. I say, this tastes a bit off. Did you put the milk in first or something? Ah, was that wrong? 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 What sort of animal do you think I am? A <laughs> most fine one, my friend. Come along, we need to be off. The ticket says we are to meet a Mr. Walters at the docks and he'll sail us out to Guildford's Island. Oh, very well. I suppose this will have to do. Milk first, I ask you. Ah, just smell that salty sea air. It takes me back to my childhood holidays on the coast with Gilfrey. Even then you could tell the old boy was destined for a life on the waves. Don't much care for it myself. Went on a ghastly school trip to Blackpool as a lad. I tried to go for a donkey ride. Donkey was furious. He told me I was too heavy. Wretched fellow. Well, never mind that now, old boy. We need to find the docks and this salty Walters chap who's going to take us over to Gilfrey's Island. Let me in, you bleeding crooked canine. Oh, hello, sir. Sorry, in a bit of a jam here. Good day to you, sir. <laughs> bleeding well isn't a good day. That reprobate Walters has locked me out of my own pub. I do apologise, sir. Shouldn't take it out on you like, but he's going to drink me out of business if I don't get back in there to stop him. Indeed, sir. Quite the predicament. So this is your establishment, I take it? Indeed so, sir. Used to be my father's, but I took it over as the oldest of the litter. We do a good trade, serving the sailors and dock workers, even if we have to put up with less savoury characters from time to time. I say, Winklebottom, I do hope he's not talking about the chap who's meant to sail us out of the island. Can we help you get the door open? I'm rather afraid I have business with this Walters fella. He's bleeding well gone and locked the door from the inside. And my spare key is in my bedroom on the top floor. How am I meant to get up there? Sound rather like your forte, eh, what? I do have a certain talent for retrieving things from high places, yes. Oh, if you wouldn't mind, sir. It's the window on the right up there. Uh, not the left one. That leads to the hallway and we had it sealed up. As it lets a proper terrible draught in right through the pub. We catch our death if you open that one. Picking up litter, eh? Very public spirited. I'm not quite sure what I'm on this for, but wanted I do. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I can see them, but they're rather frustratingly out of reach.
I say, old chap, a moment of your time. Greetings, my good man. Good day to you. What can I do for you? I have a ticket for conveyance of myself and my colleague here with a Mr. Walters. I wonder if you know the gentleman. That lay about. Oh, I know him all right, but you'll not be going anywhere with him till he pays his docking fees. Nobody leaves this dock without my say-so. No docking fees, no permit to leave. I say, Winklebottom, this Walters fellow sounds like a flaky sort of character, what? Well, can we discuss this permit? How might we obtain a permit to allow us to leave the dock? Well, you could get Walters to pay his docking fees, but that's not likely to happen. Tell you what, I'm a bit short-staffed today. So if you help me with repairing this ship, I'll give you a permit. Manual labour? Don't much like the sound of that. I have a surgeon's hooves, don't you know? Well, what can we do to help? I can do the actual work, but I've run out of wood. I need some planks or something. Very well, we shall obtain some wood for you. Also, this barrel of tar here is solidified. I don't need much, but I need a way to melt some of it. Some way to melt the tar, I see. Shouldn't be a problem for a genius like you, eh, what? Right then, Frumble, let's see what we can do by getting hold of this permit. A boat hook. This should come in handy. Let's take this with us, just in case. Ah yes, this seems to be just the ticket. Perhaps I should keep this hook for collecting out of reach leaves. Right then, this should do the trick. Oh, thank you kindly, sir. Right then, let's see what that bleeder has been up to in my pub. Wouldn't fancy being in that fellow's shoes, eh? You'll bleeding well pay for this, Walters. Look what you've done. This bleeding barrel is bleeding well empty now. Get out, you hear? Keep your snout out of me business. I be leaving in me own time. I won't be taking no orders from a landlubber like you. I say, Frumpel, this is the chap who's going to sail us to the island. Fellow looks like he's barely able to stand, let alone sail the ship. Oi, what is it? Greetings, my good man. Well, spit it out. What be you wanting, stranger? You are Salty Walters, I take it? That I am, and don't you be forgetting it neither. Then you are to take us to the Isle of Bargast. Nope, I be staying here with me drinks. I'll not be sailing today. Not for you nor anybody else. I, I, I say, you also, we have tickets, you know. Paid for in advance. Nah. Now look here, you bounder. We have tickets and you will jolly well sail us out to that island. Dash it all. I won't be sailing today. I drinks me beer to wash away the terrible taste of the salty seawater. And hates it, I does. I'll not be sailing again for a while now that I've got that accursed taste out of me system. Ironic that a man named Salty should hate the taste of seawater, so, isn't it, Frumple? Dashed inconvenient, if you ask me. Well, goodbye then. Fellow seems more than a little worse for wear, thanks to all that beer. Since the landlord is looking the other way, perhaps I might borrow this for a moment. I'll be sure to return it, naturally. Fellow's probably used to things going walk about in this place, anyway. I say, Barky, would you mind awfully if I took this empty barrel? You'd be doing me a favour. That beer-soaked bulldog has emptied it anyway. Damned if I can figure out where you keep all this stuff, Winklebottom. Get your bleeding hooves off. I mean, would you mind leaving that where it is, please, sir? I lose a dozen of those a day to these thieving bleeders. How can I help you, sir? I wonder what you can tell us about the sailor who's been slumped over that table over there. The bane of my bleeding existence, that's what he is. He's cleared me out. Can you believe it? Drunk all me bleeding beer he has. Very bothersome, I'm sure. I say, old chap, any chance of lighting the fire? There's a bit of a nip in the air, after all. No bleeding way. Cost me money, that does. And with that waste of space, drinking me out of house and home, I need to save every last shilling. I'd have to get a lot colder before I start a fire. 
I say, old boy, would you mind awfully letting us have that jug of rum you have sitting on the bar over there? Well, I suppose you did help me get back into my pub. Fine. You can have the bleeding thing. On the house, like. Well, thank you for your time. Very good, sir. We should take our reward with us. Now let's see if we can't get this window open. No, it's no good. Stuck fast. Give another go. Probably just been painted over. Well, if you say so, just one more... Oh. Oh dear, well that didn't go entirely according to plan. How awfully embarrassing. Still got the job done, what? I say, it is rather chilly in here, what? Yeah, it's colder than Poseidon's drawers in here. Oh, for goodness sake. I'll have to light the bleeding fire now. Now to heat this poker up somewhat. Yes, this has done the trick splendidly. Be careful with that thing. Don't want to burn a hole in your britches. Right then, Frumble, just watch this. Yes, the hot poker is melting through the tar like butter. Oh, what a noxious niff. Let's get rid of this stuff quickly. This is just what I need. I could use this to waterproof the repair. Here you are then, sir, some alcohol. Perhaps this will quench your thirst. I say, you nearly ripped your blasted hoof off. <laughs> Well, that seems to have calmed him down considerably, but I can't help but feel we aren't really helping the poor wretch here. Now this fellow has calmed down, I'm sure he won't object to his borrowing his saw. You see, doesn't mind a bit. I tied the ropes with the handle of this jug. Now I'll lower the jug down on this rope and yes, we now have a jug full to the brim with salty seawater. Now, Frumple, you hold onto the barrel and I'll attempt to chop it up. Careful where you're waving that thing. No other doctor's around to patch me up if you slip, you know. <laughs> Let's do the job. Ah, yes. This'll do nicely. I could use this wood for me repairs. Thank you for that, fellas. Now I could repair the hole in this boat. First class job. Even if I don't say so myself. Well, nobody else is likely to. Well, with that done, I'm finished for the day, so you're both free to go. Give this permit to Walters and let him know his debt is cleared. This time. Terrible Sawyer and Song be that! Last orders are upon us already! Quake, you rapacious rapscallion! I've been eating more beer! Quickly, while he's not looking, just pour this into his beer. <laughs> ah, what be this foul flavour? Oh, me last beer is ruined, and that pickaroon pig won't sell me no more. Do I take it you might now be willing to carry out your job? No reason not to, no. Maybe the Admiral can see his way to providing me with a bit of the old grog. <laughs> Go way back, him and me. Join me to the docks, then. I, I'd be waiting at me vessel. Make it quick, mind you. My word, there appears to be a storm coming in. We must make haste and get out of the island before it hits. Wait, you don't mean this is your ship? Oi, that it be? And what of it? I just don't think it looks particularly seaworthy. She's a fine vessel! Served me on many a long voyage, she has. Besides, 
I be the only sailor for hire in the dock right now, so you don't have a choice. That's not terribly reassuring. Shall we set sail for the island then? Oi, that we will. All me permits are in order, so all aboard for the Isle of Bergest. Last. Madam, would you be so kind as to let your master know? Oh, sir! It's terrible! A tragedy! The master! He's. he's dead! I say what? It's true, sir! Oh, the poor master! I found him, sir, just floating there in his tube! Stiff as a board he was! Oh, it was horrible! Gilfrey, dead? But this doesn't make any sense. He was in the prime of his life. The, the fellow was as strong as an ox. A oh, very tiny ox, anyway. Oh, oh, I say, old chap, I, I am sorry. We should take a look, just to be certain. Madam, Dr. Frumple here will want to examine the poor fellow. And if there's even a hint of foul play, you can be certain that Lord Winklebottom will get to the bottom of it. Oh, my lord, thank God you're here. The master spoke of you often. Tell me, who else is in the house? Well, my lord, there's the staff. That's myself and Ambrose, the butler. Uh, the gong over there should summon him. Also, Pumphrey, the gardener. Though he's been moping around outside of late. Miserable sod it is. Oh, sorry, my lord. Anybody else? Oh, yes, my lord. There are a great many guests here today. The master had a big announcement to make, he said. Right, Frumple, we should have a look at poor Gilfrey, then introduce ourselves to the other guests. Thank you, madam, you've been most helpful. You're welcome, my lord. Have you any luggage with you? I can have Ambrose take it upstairs for you. Alas, no, we lost most of our possessions on the journey over here. Our means of conveyance turned out to be a touch unstable. It was all I could do to keep hold of me tea. It would be prudent to alert someone on the mainland to the death. Hello? Operator? Ah, yes, hello. I wonder if you'd be so kind as to connect me to Scotland Yard. Inspector Culver's office, if you please. Yes, thank you. What the devil, the lights have gone out. What on earth was all that about? I'm not sure. I say, the telephone line has gone dead. And look at this. Crikey, that's a bit of a mess. What could have done this? Well, one thing's for sure, we're not going to be able to contact the mainland until we can get this repaired. This wire has been severed cleanly too, by the looks of it. Bit suspect if you ask me. Can we repair it? Maybe, if we can find some replacement wire to bridge the gap. Perhaps we could discuss the other people who are here. Who else is on the staff here? Other than Ambrose, it's just Pumphrey, the gardener. Such a shame to see the house so low on staff. Oh, my lord, you should have seen the place where my mistress was still alive. Oh. Used to be more of you, eh? Oh, yes, sir. It's really just a skeleton staff now. The master was away so much on his travels. More so since the mistress passed away. He doesn't need a full staff these days, I'm afraid. What can you tell me about the guests here? I don't know any of them well. It's the first time we've had guests since the mistress died. God rest our soul. You're the last to arrive, so you'll find them all around the house. Thank you very much. Do you know why we've all been invited here? Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. I don't. The master was being most mysterious about it. Something to do with his research, I'd fancy, but it's, it's all beyond me. That'll be all for now, madam.
This is a portrait of Guilfrey's late wife, Ethelberta. She died tragically young a few years ago. How did she die, anyway? It was a terrible incident involving an airship. I say, crashed with her on board? No, she flew too close to the propellers and, well, you can imagine the rest. Oh, grisly way to go. Ah, portrait of the great fellow himself. Distinguished looking chap, eh, Winglebottom? A painting of Guilfrey's only daughter, Constance. A painting of one Max the Tux Sheldon. I say, didn't this fellow help us out in a case once? Indeed so. Quite a respectable chap now, but had a bit of a murky past, I recall. Yes, gave us some information about a particularly loathsome fellow who'd been running a smuggling ring. A portrait of Vetus Barnus. Maybe somebody Gilfie knew from his military days. Looks like a pretty tough brave sort to me, at any rate. Seems like a most agreeable fellow. I say, Frumble, this is a portrait of King Alec, the most popular monarch in his day. Oh, indeed so. A very good old boy, as I understand it. Quite so, Frumple. A good boy indeed. I'll just take this. You know, I can prescribe medication if you need it. You don't have to go around stealing drugs from dead people. It's an empty bottle, Frumple. Different seats for small, medium and large posteriors. Saves accidents with smaller animals falling in the bowl. Most considerate. The guest bedrooms are all down here. I suppose we should investigate. Don't know why we bother. Even the daftest criminal isn't stupid enough to leave incriminating evidence lying around in his own bedroom. Well, that was a bally waste of time. What did I tell you? I know, old friend, but we had to do it. Ah, I do believe I've met this gentleman, a fellow by the name of Tobin. Wily looking chap. I dare say he would have a tale or two to tell. Indeed so. Quite the talented wordsmith, too. He throws around some most impressive verbiage. This is a self-portrait, apparently, of a fellow by the name of Lake Cabilius. A renowned scientist and explorer. Maybe a colleague of Gilfrey's. Perhaps so. I believe I may have met the chap once at a party held by him and his husband. Very good food, as I recall. From what I recall, this door leads to the attic. Sadly, it appears to be locked at the moment. Oh, why do people insist on locking doors all over the place? Most inconvenient. Nobody ever considers us. I rather imagine Guilfrey wasn't expecting to die, so probably wasn't anticipating our investigation. Well, yes, I, I suppose the whole thing is rather more inconvenient for him. Oh, I say, this is a bit risque. I've never understood why mole rats are so averse to wearing clothing like any normal animal. Bunch of exhibitionists, if you ask me. Greetings, good sir. Ulysses Spode of Spode, Spode and Flavonet. At your service, sir. What a ludicrous collection of names that is. Quite so, Frumpel. And what part do you play in today's events? Don't rightly know, sir. Old Gilfrey wanted me to come and observe, he said. Worried there might be a spot of bother about whatever it was he was announcing. Legal bother, you mean? As you say. Wouldn't tell me in advance what the whole bally palaver was all about, though. I suppose now we'll never know. Well, perhaps. So, since I'm here anyway and the old boy's popped off, might as well sort through his paperwork and make sure everything is in order. Lots to sort out when somebody dies, you know. Especially somebody as rich as him. We shall speak more later. Always here if you need me.
Greetings, dear lady. Oh, hello. I am Lord Winklebottom III, and this is my companion, Dr. Frumple. I'm Vivian. Dr. Vivian Price. You're a doctor? Yes. Well, sort of. Not medicine. Geology. And physics. Also biology and linguistics. A few things. Yes, well, medicine is difficult, especially for a, well, you know. Frumple. Oh, don't worry. I'm used to that sort of reaction. Were you invited here for this great announcement too? Me? Oh, no, I live here. Well, not here in the house, but but on the island. I I work... I worked, I suppose, for Admiral Guilfrey. Strange. The maid didn't mention other stuff. No, she wouldn't. People tend to forget about me, you see, Mr Winklebottom. Sometimes I think I might as well just blend into the scenery. What was the nature of your employment here? You know of Guilfrey's expeditions. I helped him examine the artefacts he brought back. Cataloguing, mostly. But sometimes there'd be something more interesting. Anything recently? Could that be what he intended to announce? Some big discovery? No, nothing. I'm sure I would have known if there was something like that. I am sorry, Mr Winklebottom. What do you know of the other people in the house? Not very much, I'm afraid. I haven't really spoken to anybody. I don't even know the staff all that well. I tried talking to the gardener earlier, but he was in a frightful temper. You mentioned the gardener was in a bad mood. Do you know why? Oh, well, he's always kind of grumpy, you know, but he seemed perfectly livid last time I saw him. Thought he was being given the sack, I think. Something about a vegetable patch? You should probably ask him. Thank you, miss. Might come in useful, I suppose. Oh, look, this is a map of the island. This will come in useful, I'm sure. Let's take one of these envelopes. A small blade used for opening letters. My god, Winklebottom, this might be it. The murder weapon. Other than there being no blood in the water, this blade barely being sharp enough to break paper, let alone flesh, and the fact the murderer would have to dry it off and place it back in his desk after using it, rather than just taking it with him, yes, I'd say this fits the facts rather well. Nobody likes you when you act like a blasted club clogs, you know. On top of all that, we don't even know that this is a murder yet. Yes, you've made your point. A notepad. Looks like the top page has been torn off. Oh, you know what this means. Quick, give me a pencil. I'm going to rub over it and reveal what was written on a torn-off sheet. This is my favourite. Here you go, then. It's working. It's working. Let me see now. One dozen eggs, one lettuce, a quart of milk. Well done, Frumple. You've uncovered an old shopping list. Oh, uh, how disappointing. The sign next to this light says, Warning, do not open pressure valve when pump is powered. Maybe just a slight turn, just to see what happens. No, Frumple. A photograph from one of Guilfrey's expeditions. Jeff suddenly got around a bit, didn't he? Photographs from some of Guilfrey's expeditions. Jeff suddenly got around a bit, didn't he? Looks like our dear friend Inspector Culver has solved another case. It seems this was an international case. He was aided by a foreign chap named Inspector Waffles. I'd rather go for a waffle right now. Is there any time you couldn't? Oh, I say, a gong. Shall I gong it? I'm not entirely convinced that gong is a verb, but very well if you... Gong! You don't actually need to say gong, you know. Oh, well, I I suppose, but where's the fun in that? Strange, the maid said this would call the butler, but he's nowhere to be seen. Greetings, sir. Ah, hello, my child. I am most pleased to make your acquaintance at this sad, sad time. 
Pleased to meet you. I am Lord Winklebottom III, and this is my colleague, Dr. Reginald Frumple. Bless you, my children. I am Reverend Archibald Peabody. Do you know any of the other guests? I believe I may have seen Madame Lavinia at some interfaith conference or other, but not to speak to. Other than that, I'm afraid not. Do you know why Gilfrey invited you here today? Oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't know. I've not heard from him for a few years until just recently when he wrote to me out of the blue. I know he had something to announce, but I'm afraid I don't know what. It is most intriguing, to be sure. Well, thank you for your time, Reverend. Oh, yes, quite so, my boy, quite so. Greetings. Ah, Winklebottom, isn't it? I've written reports about your exploits for my newspaper. Oh, really? And which of our adventures have you covered? <laughs> Sorry, old thing. Not sure I recognise you. Frumble. Doctor Frumble? You said you covered our cases. Oh, that's right. You're the gentleman's gentleman, yes? We're partners. Equal partners. Blasted hack. All right, Frumble. Pleased to meet you, sir, but I'm afraid you have me at a disadvantage. Winslet's the name, old thing. Pleased to meet you, sir. I say, it's true what they say, then, about you preferring to walk on all fours. <laughs> Bit old-fashioned these days, what? I just happen to think it's rather more refined. Plus it bash it bonds on the ceiling if you try to walk in the modern style. And how do you know, Gilfrey? Do you know why you're invited here today? In reverse order, and not a blasted clue, and I'm engaged to his daughter Constance. You're a journalist, you say? Could that be the reason you're here? <laughs> Might be, old boy. The old fellow wasn't entirely taken with me, truth be told, but if he wanted somebody to get the word out about something, <laughs> I'd certainly fit the bill. You didn't get along with Gilfrey, then? Well, I mean, I've never actually met him, you understand. This is the first time Constance has brought me to the island. But I'm sure he wouldn't approve of me. Crikey, my own family don't. So why would somebody else's? So you're engaged to young Constance over there? Oh, Winklebottom, I'm a changed cat since meeting her. I was quite the party animal, but fair to say, she's tamed me. You didn't get on with the Admiral, though? It was nothing he said to understand, but I don't think he approved. I don't have a lot of luck with family. Even my own disinherited me. I say, that's rather harsh of them. Too many parties, I suppose. And being a journalist <laughs> is not exactly an appropriate job for somebody of my status, you know. Most unfortunate. I get to keep the title. I'm a baronet, don't you know? But I'm afraid it's left me rather cash poor. Thank you for your time. Oh, just look at him, Frumple. Died in his house tube network. It simply doesn't make any sense. He was such a hardy fellow. If we can get him out, I'll determine what killed him. Never you fear. Now, let us have a look in here. Oh, uh, just some papers. How boring. Not inherently so, but in this case, yes. They don't seem to be of any great interest. Although it does seem odd that they're in such a mess. It's almost as if somebody had been rummaging through them in a hurry. Best way, in my opinion, gets it out of the way. I much prefer reading things with nice pictures in them. Medical books have some excellent drawings. One would hope that you would at least glance at the words, mind you. Ah, this chap is Lord Malcolm Schmidt. I've met him in a house a number of times. A great speaker, although I'm not sure all it makes a good deal of sense. Looks most distinguished. Generally, yes, though not so much when food is around. It can get quite rockers at times. I say, look at this old boy. It's Gilfrey and I during our school days. Ah, those were happy times. Not for me. You couldn't abide school. The other boys used to make fun of my name. Dumple, they call me. The rotters. Ah, look at this. It's Gilfrey and Ethelbert on their wedding day. A splendid time was had by all, I can assure you, Frumple. Such a tragedy, Gethelbert had passed away so young. Yes, terrible business. Just terrible. Ah, look at him here. The pride of the Admiralty. They say he had the sea running through his veins. Greetings. You must be Miss Gilfrey. Our most sincere condolences on your sad loss. Oh, if it isn't Lord Winklebottom. 
father talked about you often. And you must be Mr. Frumpel? Uh, doctor, actually. Uh, that is, I mean, uh, sorry if you are lost, miss. First mother and now this. I think we must have done something unspeakable in a past life to suffer so much pain in this one. Don't you agree, Lord Winklebottom? There has been some terrible tragedy here, I agree, but I fear there may be some more earthly causes for the most recent one, at least. You think there's villainy at work here? We don't know yet, however, his death was quite the shock, as, as far as I know, he was fit as a fiddle before he died. In any case, Dr. Frumpel will be able to tell us more. I think, if you don't mind, I'd just like to be left alone for a while. Goodbye for now, Miss Gilfrey. Let's take these with us. Indeed. It will be sheer folly to leave them. I say, sheer folly. Because they're... Yes, I understood. Actually, I believe they're second earths. I say, this is some most appetizing looking foliage. I once knew a chap who was killed after getting trapped in one of those. So Bumbles the second. Very nasty one to go. This picture plant is full of nasty looking liquid. Some kind of sap, I presume. What did you call me? I'm not sure they're designed for metal, but these shears are just about managing to get through the coat hanger. Looks like they're jiggered now, though. Best check them away. Not the most professional repair, but I think this should allow us to use the telephone. Let's give this a try, then. Ah, yes, I have a connection. Operator, get me Scotland Yard. Has it got through? She's just connecting me now. Ah, greetings. This is Lord Winklebottom. I wish to report a suspicious death on the Isle of Vargas. I say hello? Hello? What's wrong? The line's dead. Must have gone down somewhere outside the house. Blasted! I don't think my message got through. Sound to us, Frumple. We must investigate this death ourselves. This painting is called Adventure Awaits, apparently. Huh. Personally, I could do with a bit less adventure in my life. Greetings. You are Lord Winklebottom, are you not? I say, that's amazing. Did you see all that new crystal ball? Or a message from the spirits, perhaps? No, I saw an article about you in the newspaper earlier today. Oh, well, yes, I, I suppose that will also work. Anyway, I am very pleased to meet you. I am Madame Lavinia, and I am a spirit medium. Well, quite. What can you tell me about Gilfrey? Oh, that poor soul. Such tragedy in this household. First my dear Ethelberta, and now Aristotle. Their daughter must be devastated. Quite so. Very sad business all round. Very sad. What's your connection to Gilfrey? I've known Ethelberta since she was a duckling. I've no idea why darling Aristotle invited me today, though. None at all. Thank you for your time. Greetings, madam. What's that, young man? Speak up! I said greetings, madam. No, it's no good. No diction. That's the problem with you young people. You need to learn to project, my boy. We're not going to get very far here, Winklebottom. My diagnosis is the old bird is deaf as a post. I'm so glad to have you here, Frumple. I've no idea how I would manage without your expert opinion on such matters. Oh, thank you, old thing. Thank you for your time, madam. What's that? Move your head closer. I can't hear you all the way up there. Uh, I say, Winklebottom, do you know who this is? It's Dame Celia Wellington Boot. I'm sure I have no idea. But she's famous. Dame Celia was a star of the stage. I had quite the crush on her as a young calf. I suppose a tiny nibble wouldn't hurt. Careful, little thing. You'll get your head stuck in that bars. I say you're right. Yes, my head goes all the way in. I can eat the stalks, too. Okay. 
It's surprising how often a good sharp knife comes in handy during an investigation. Oh my god. Frumpel, look at this, this is terrible. What? What is it? They're keeping red wine in the refrigerator. This is sacrilege. Oh, is that all? I thought you found something important. A block of butter. Might be useful. It's rock solid, however. I like it when it's solid. Easier to take a bite out of your dinner. Frumpel, you're the food expert. Do you think we should take this with us? As you wish, but don't expect me to know what to do with it. I'm rather more interested in the end results than the process, you know? There are some matches in this box. I'll take these, or rather this. There only seems to be one match left. Just open this hatch. Ugh, plastic thing won't stay open. Need a steady hoof to do this, as there's only one match left. There we go, the cooker is heating up nicely now. Let's put the pan on the stove top. How thrilling! I've always wanted to try my hoofed cooking. Ah, look, Frumple, the heat has melted the butter into an oily liquid. My good man. Do you mind? I have work to do. This storm is going to ruin my plants. Perhaps you've not yet heard, but I'm afraid you're master. Oh, I've heard. And where does that leave me? That's what I want to know. Bloody inconsiderate of him it is. Charming fellow, isn't he? Oh, well then, my good fellow. Oh, yes, you just go indoors. That's fine. Don't worry about me. Bloody love a storm, I do. I say, Frumpel, look, there's an imprint here. Somebody must have dropped something in the wet mud. On the shave, I deduce. Oh, it's very obviously a key. There's no need to act so badly clever about it, you know? As you say, a key. <coughs> I say, Frumple, what on earth was that? Some kind of commotion coming from the drawing room, I think. Quickly, we must investigate. Frumpel to the orangery. Miss Kilfrey is in grave danger. Miss Kilfrey, what is it? Whatever is the matter? Oh, Lord Wicklebottom, it, it, it was terrible. A simply frightful thing. I say, steady on. What are you talking about? Out there, Dr. Frumpel, out in the dark, it, it was a creature, a, a thing. I've never seen such a ghastly sight. Are you sure, Miss Kilfrey? Could it perhaps have been Mr. Walters returning to his boat? It wasn't a person, Lord Winklebottom. It wasn't an animal at all. It, it was wet and hairless and... Oh, God, that face! I shall never forget it. What now? Please, try to be calm, Miss Gilfrey. We must investigate. Oh, sirs, thank goodness you're here. He just burst in, soaking wet, and ranting and raving about a monster. Gah! A foul, fearsome beast! Away! Away with you! Poor fellow looks in a bad way. Rumple? Chap seems delusional. We should get him into bed for some rest. Came at me out the trees! A malign monster! Ah! Tis after me! Tis after me! Looks like he needs a good rest. They can use one of the beds in the servants' quarters. I'm sure Ambrose won't object. Right then, Frumple, let's help get him into bed. As long as I don't have to get too close, he smells like a blessed brewery. Come on then, old chap. Right, we got the fellow settled. Should be right to rain soon. As long as the bar guest doesn't come for him. I say what? Oh, never mind me, sir. Just a silly fancy. Did you say bar guest? Like the name of this island? He's stuffed, really, I suppose, but the bar guest is a ferocious monster sent to roam the island at night. He's part dog, part monster. They say that anybody who sees it will surely die soon after. Sounds like a pretty disagreeable chap, what? 
As a poppycock, mind you. Well, one last thing, sirs, if it pleases you. In all the commotion, Madame Lavinia has misplaced her crystal ball. Says it's been stolen. Would you believe it? Dash careless of her. I've promised to keep an eye out for anything suspicious out here, but maybe you could go and talk to her. Very well, we shall see what the problem is. What can you tell us about the lady sat over there? Oh, I can't get a word out of her. The old bat needs some sort of hearing aid, if you ask me. These modern hearing aids are a miracle of science. Some are badly larger than a briefcase, you know. I say, what's happened to your crystal ball? Oh, it's that criminal sat in her chair over there. She's acting like she's oblivious, but look at her bill. She's clearly stolen it. Well, that's really not on. I even tried mentioning the Scottish play to shock it out of her, but she's deaf as a post. The Scottish play? The Shakespeare play. Macduff. Actors are terrified of it. I think Shakespeare will come and eat them if it's even mentioned, or, or something like that. Thank you for your time. Madam, perhaps you could return the good lady's crystal ball. What's that? Music hall? Ah, oh, you must be a fan. Sorry, darling. I don't do requests. Daft old bird. Macbeth. The cheek. I do not have bad breath. Well, that works about as well as could be expected. Thank you for your time, madam. What's that? Move your head closer. I can't hear you all the way up there. I wonder if I can find any information about that plant we saw in the orangery. Ah, yes, here we are. What does it say? Apparently, that sticky fluid in the plant is a kind of resin. Mix it with a strong alkali and apply a heat source and it'll set hard as rock. Maybe we could use that for something if we can get hold of a heat source. help procure me some kind of portable heat source. Procure a heat source? Not much. If you want to borrow a lamp, just bloody well say so, why don't you? Well, it's not too much trouble. Oh, no, that's just fine and dandy. I tell you what, you wait here in the shelter while I go off in the middle of a bloody storm to find you a lamp. Wouldn't want you to go to any bother, like. Most gracious of you, I'm sure. Well, here you are then. Do be careful not to burn your bloody hooves on it, will you? I'm off inside, now that I've battened down the ashes out here. Don't feel you have to fall on me, like. Never did like invertebrates. Various works of fiction. These are most likely Ethelberters. Aristotle preferred his scientific tones instead. Oh, Shakespeare. The master's made us read it at school, told it all rot. Don't mind the one with the two lovers from rival families of mongooses and capybaras, though. I say, Frumple, there's a copy of the play Madame Lavinia mentioned here. Macdeath. You know, this might just come in useful. Just as long as you don't force me to read it. Well, what is it? I wonder, was there some trouble between you and Gilfrey? If you don't mind me saying so, you seem a touch put out. Put out? Put out? I'm bloody livid, Mush. The old git was planning to tell me to sling my hook. I heard him saying as much. He was going to fire you. Too bloody right he was. I heard him talking about me to someone over the phone. And you're sure it was about you? Of course it was. Gone too far this time, he said. Getting out of hand, he said. Just because I like to sample the vegetable garden from time to time. Sample? All right, I ate the old bloody lot. I mean, I can't help it, can I? It's in my bloody nature, isn't it? Well, plants are frightfully tasty, old thing. Exactly. You know where I'm coming from. And be honest, if it's a choice between some lovely homegrown lettuce and that slop barrel cooks up, 
You know what I mean? It just would, wouldn't it? Well, thank you for your time. Go on then. Push off. See if I care. Right then, I'll collect a quantity of sap in the empty bottle. Uh, I say, madam, I have a play here that might interest you. The Scottish play! Get away from me! Away! <gasps> Thank you so much for getting my crystal ball back. I will let Beryl know that she needn't stand guard any longer. Don't mention it, madam. Do you know why we've all been invited here? Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. I don't. The master was being most mysterious about it. Something to do with his research, I'd fancy, but it's, it's all beyond me. That'll be all for now, madam. I say, Winklebottom, that fellow must have been going like a bomb when you ran into that wall, what? <laughs> uh, I think I've heard that one before, and it's not in very good taste. I suppose when you think about it, it is quite an odd tradition. A little morbid, in fact. Look, the poor fellow even has some of his clothing still on him. This chap is beyond even your skills, I fear. Let's leave him be. Sorry about this, sir, but I'm afraid we have need of your tie. My lord, whatever are you doing? Stop that this instant! Oh, uh, frightfully sorry, madam. Can't do this while the old goat is hanging around, what? We may need to convince her to leave. Perhaps you should get some rest, dear lady. I am feeling quite tired after all the commotion. I suppose there won't be any more guests now, and the madam's missing item has been found. So I should get a bit of rest. Sorry about this, sir, but I'm afraid we have need of your tie. Take this with us. You must be flummoxed if you think we're going to be in this blasted place long enough for you to start getting correspondence. I suppose this fabric will soak up the grease. Ah yes, we now have a greasy tie. How splendid. You do do the strangest things, Winklebottom. I'll just touch the wick to the flame and here we are, the lantern is illuminated. This might do the job if I hold the door open one hoof and try to jam the letter opener in with the other. Yes, I think that's going to keep the door open. It's open now, so I should be able to look inside. Right, with this door held open, I can just about get my head in here. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Well, that was a tight squeeze. I can't really do much down here, but I can have a look around at least. This is a bottle of lye, an alkali used for cleaning. This is a dangerous substance. I don't especially want to pick it up with my mouth, but I suppose I don't really have a choice. Looks like there are some bags over yonder, but I can't tell what's inside them.
Let's pull this sap into the imprint of the key. Yes, that's filled it nicely. Let's put this alkali into the sap then. Yeah, let me do it. This needs the steady hoof of a surgeon. Oh. Oh dear, well, it all went in at any rate. Let me try and apply heat on this lamp to the resin mixture, and let's see what happens. Oh, can't see anything happening. How boring. Give it time, Frumpel. Can we go now? I'm so bored waiting for this. You know, Frumpel, I rather think we can. Look, the resin is set solid, just like the book said. Oh yes, no, never doubted it for a moment. Looks like we now have a copy of the key that was dropped here. Now to find what is the key to. Maybe this key we made will fit the lock on the cellar door. By Jove, it works. Well done, Winklebottom. Oh, unfortunately it snapped off in the lock. I suppose the resin wasn't really strong enough. Still got the door open anyway. this a turn and see if we can't drain the system to get Gilfrey out of there. Uh, uh, it's no use. The wheel is completely seized up. We'll need to lubricate it somehow. Found to be some oil or grease around the place somewhere. Right then, I'll wipe this liquid butter around the valve using the tie we got up a dead moose's mounted head. There is literally no simpler way we could have done this. I think I might dispose of this now. It's absolutely disgusting. Let's give this a turn and see if we can't drain the system to get Gilfrey out of there. The lubrication has helped, but I still can't turn it. If only I had some leverage. A relic of the Great Frog Wars. Gilfrey was most fond of ancient history. I say, that axe he's carrying would do you a real mischief if he got on the wrong end of it. A long metal axe. This seems very sturdy. Even the handle is metal. I say, Winklebottom. I bet Gilfrey liked this axe a lot. Or... Uh, because he's an axe a lot. Yes. I understand. Sorry, my friend, I'm rather afraid I have more of a need for this than you do. There's just nothing you won't half inch given the chance, is there? Lubricating the valve wasn't enough, but maybe this will help us get some leverage on it. Since there's no way to contact the mainland, we should flush out the body and perform an autopsy ourselves. Are you sure you know what you're doing? The Guilfrey estate will not be held liable for any damage or injury caused by incorrect operation of that device. Oh, hang it all. What's the worst that can happen? Well, that was a most eventful night. Quite so, old boy. Hopefully our call got through to the police on the mainland, though I don't hold out much hope in that regard. Our first priority should be the autopsy. I'll need to go and have a look at the body.
Good lord, what was that? It sounded like it came from the drawing room. We must investigate. Somebody please come quickly! It's Miss Gilfrey again. Hurry, Frumpole. Oh, Lord Winklebottom, Dr. Frumpole, thank goodness you're here. I just came back this morning and I discovered this horrific mess. What a disgusting sight. What on earth is it? I do believe it's Mr. Pumphrey, the gardener. Whatever could have happened to him? Poor chap looks to have been doused in salt water. Deadly to certain invertebrates, you know. Salt water? Why would salt water be running through the pipes in here? <laughs> I need some fresh air. You'll find me outside if you need me. Oh, look at this! Ah, Miss Price! You gave me quite the start. I didn't notice you coming in. Story of my life. This is fascinating, though. I'd heard this could happen to slugs, but I've never witnessed it before. Oh, I would like to study it. Bit grim. Poor Mr. Pumphrey. I say, you don't think this had anything to do with us messing around with that water system, do you? Oh, I don't suppose so, no. On balance, I'm certain this was just a terrible but entirely unrelated accident. Tell us a bit about your work. It's hard to know where to begin, really. It was very varied. Archaeology, historical research, even paleontology. Gilfrey had found a lot of very interesting artefacts over the years. And you were cataloguing them all? I wasn't just his secretary, if that's what you were implying. I studied them, made notes, performed tests to determine age and so on. We were doing solid research. Had you made any significant discoveries recently? Could that be what Gilfrey was planning to announce? No, nothing out of the ordinary. Certainly nothing that would be of interest to the general public. Could we perhaps take a look at your notes to see if there's anything that stands out? I'm afraid not. Mr. Gilfrey took them and I don't know where he put them. I'd be very grateful to have them back if you happen to find them. Thank you, Miss Price. Right then, I suppose you'll need to perform this autopsy. Trouble is, I don't have all my equipment. Wasn't expecting to need it. At the very least, I'll need a knife, some needle and thread, and some kind of apron to protect myself. Have to ask around, I suppose. Poor Gilfrey. How sad he should end up like this. I suppose we should search the body for clues. Looks like there's something in his pocket. We should probably take a look. I'll need to perform an autopsy as soon as possible, too. Let's try to do this as quickly as we can. I don't like to think of him just lying here in the bathtub like this. You know, this sort of reminds me of that case we had in Yorkshire a few years back. Remember that? Hogfellow was murdered by being pushed down a hill in a bathtub. Last of the summer swine, the press called it. Shall we get on, Frumple? We should check his pockets. Frumple, will you do the honours? Only thing he has on him is a key by the looks of it. Nothing else here. Ah, Miss Clutterbuck, I wonder if you might be able to lend us your apron for a short time. I think not, my lord. I'd be lost without it. Uh, give me a minute and I'll get you one of my spares, though. There you are, my lord. You can keep this one. It never did me any good in any case. Oh, my. Uh, here, Frumple, you can keep hold of this. Thank you, Miss Clutterbuck. Well, we have a key and we have a locked door. It would be most remiss of us not to at least attempt to use one with the other. Well, go on then. Stop wittering on and just try it. Oh, very well. No luck, I'm afraid. The door appears to be jammed shut. I swear I can hear movement inside, though. I say, you in there. I insist you open this door at once. Well, I'm out of ideas. We need to force it open somehow. 
Look, Fremble, somebody seems to have dropped a book. Anything good? I like that one where animals from space came down in weird two-legged walking machines, then caught rabies and died. Very exciting. Ah, uh, no, actually, it appears to be a prayer book. We should return it to its rightful owner. Strange that it would be here, mind you. I wonder, is this prayer book yours, perhaps? <gasps> Oh, goodness, yes. I've been looking for that all morning. Wherever did you find it? Rather curiously, we found it behind a locked door leading up to the attic. Oh, oh, oh my, well, that is most strange. I really can't account for that at all. Uh, most strange indeed. Nonetheless, I'm glad I was able to return it to you. Well, goodbye for now, Reverend. God be with you, my son. Ugh, this bed is absolutely filthy. Rumble, what do you make of this? Looks like some kind of slime or mucus. I'd say this bed is used by a mollusk of some sort. Filthy buggers. This looks like a child's doll. It seems to be a cuddly axolotl. Bit of an old thing to keep around. Well, the rain appears to have cleared up at least. This will make exploring the rest of the island rather easier. Yes, wouldn't have wanted to go out in that storm. My tea would have been watered down something rotten. Have you finished sorting through Guilfrey's paperwork? Did you find everything you needed? Well, not everything. There were some papers missing. If you find any of his documents or such like, do let me know. Thank you, Mr. Spode. we could discuss your family. What can you tell us about your mother? Mother and I were great pals, Lord Winklebottom. We had such laughs, often at father's expense. The house was so full of joy before. I was so very sorry to hear of Ethelberta's death. The house wasn't the same after that. I had to get away, you understand? I, I just couldn't bear it. But now I've returned, and father is... <laughs> dreadful business, just dreadful. Had you seen your father recently? No, not for some time. I was so looking forward to seeing him again, introducing him to Winslet. But alas! <laughs> Thank you, miss. Farewell, Miss Gilfrey. Tell us more about this business with your family. Not much to tell. I wanted to get a decent job and they didn't approve. Just wanted me to swan around the estate all day. Not my style, old thing. I mean, I like to enjoy myself as much as the next chap, but one has to try to make a difference, don't you think? Wish I didn't have to have a job. My life would be much easier without all the bloody sick people badgering me all day. So they disowned you? Seems a trifle harsh. Well, quite, old thing. Families, eh, Winklebottom? <laughs> More belly trouble than they're worth. We'd be better off without them. Oh, sorry, Constance. Thank you, sir. Tarquin Bernard Flopsy III, 1865 to 1908, survived by his loving wife, 38 daughters and 42 sons. May he rest in peace. A chap named Wilfred Pex is apparently buried here. The grave of a Julia Zizou. This appears to be the grave of one Brutus Nibbler. Percival Flabernacle, 1808 to 1905. May Blob be with him. How curious. For those we've lost, there are a number of names here. Here's one, Bleaky Outlook. Ethelberta's grave, you can tell how much he revered her. Don't much fancy being buried myself. Shoved into a tiny wooden box in the cold and darkness. No, I had enough of that getting over here, thank you very much. Mm. 
This trusty knife will surely slice through these vexatious vines. I say, Winklebottom, just imagine if we hadn't found that knife. Worth his weight in gold, that thing. Trample is Mr. Walters. Let me be. I'm not sticking around this place for a minute longer. Can we just let him leave like this? Who's going to stop me? You soft bellied landlubbers? It's okay, Trample. Walters clearly wasn't here when Guilfrey was killed. We can let him leave. Drunkard belly got us here in one piece, probably drown before he reaches the mainland. Still, it's his own funeral, I suppose. I'll have you know that I be as sober as a judge. After what I saw last night, I'm giving up drink for life. Well, goodbye then, Mr. Walters, and good luck. Good grief, Frumple. Who on earth is this poor unfortunate? Oh, as I live and breathe. It is. It's Lord Winklebottom. Oh, am I glad to see you, sir. Inspector Culver, what on earth happened to you? We got your call, Winklebottom. So I got here as quick as I could. I have come to help, sir. You don't look like you're in any state to do that right now. How on earth did you get here? It wasn't easy, sir. Couldn't get a boat. Only a madman would try to sail through that storm. Well, quite. Hold on a minute. You don't mean... That's right, sir. I flew here. All away from Special Branch. Now, if you don't mind, sirs, I'm starting to feel a bit... a bit... Ugh. Poor old bird has passed out. Come on, Frumple, let's get him back to the mansion to rest. Right, well, we got him settled down. We should go back and check on him later. Some driftwood is floating out on the sea. This might be useful if I could reach it. Honestly, the one thing you should be good at is reaching things at a distance. I'm not far off, but I need a bit more reach. Some kind of long pole would do the trick if it had something on the end to hook in the wood. If only I hadn't lost that boat hook earlier. Good Lord Frumple, look at this, it's Guilfrey's submarine vessel. He used this for his expeditions, made some fantastic voyages of discovery. Huh, too lazy to swim, I suppose. I rather think he's built for streams and rivers rather than whole oceans, to be fair. Oh, well, yes, I suppose that's a reasonable excuse. Well, he seems dead to the world. How does he seem to you, Frumple? Poor fellow is knackered. He'll be right as rain after a bit of rest, though. We should leave him be. I say, I didn't notice these before. They must have got disturbed with all the comings and goings in here. Let me see. Huh. There are a load of hoof-written letters. Look like pretty soppy stuff to me. My dearest A, blah, blah, secret love, blah, blah, BC. Who's BC? Well, we know a B, at least. Hmm, these letters seem a touch one-sided, and if they are from who I suspect, then it looks like they weren't ever actually given to A. This uh, might be a touch awkward, but we discovered some letters under your bed. <gasps> oh, my lord, uh, you didn't read them, did you? And how? So you're B, then? And I take it old Aristotle Guilfrey was A. Oh, my lord, I, I didn't mean anybody to see those letters. They're just a silly old goat's idle fantasy. The master was kind, but never showed me any interest. And you wished him to? More than anything, my lord. But it wasn't his way. He was still devoted to the mistress, and nobody would have changed that. Especially not somebody like me, I suppose. Thank you, Miss Clutterbuck. You know, I feel like this axe might come in useful again. 
I suppose there's no harm in taking it out now. Wait, just let me move out of the way first. I don't want to be anywhere near this lash up after the last time you touched it. See? Perfectly safe. I think. A diving suit, used by Guilfrey to remain out of his tube system for long periods. It looks like the helmet can be removed. I know I can carry a lot of things, but I draw the line at lugging around a big metal helmet for no very good reason. This might do the job. Yes, I can pull the driftwood in towards the shore. And you almost did it without dropping that antique axe into the drink too. Almost. Now I can bind this driftwood together with the vines. Yes, that makes a most satisfactory plank. This driftwood plank will make an ideal makeshift bridge over to the ship. There, perfect. Oh yes, this will definitely hold the combined weight of a giraffe and a hippo. Absolutely no danger here. Have a little faith, my friend. Notes about the times the vessel has been taken out. Nothing particularly recent as far as I can tell. Times, dates, coordinates, that sort of thing. All a load of bloody gibberish to me. Oh, I say, the last page has a note written on it. My dearest Ethelberta, a reminder that should you need to open the safe in my absence, you have only to play our tune. Fellow has a safe, then. Best look into that. Always some good clues in safes. Quite a lot of good that note does us, though. How do we know what their tune was? Fellow could have been a bit more explicit. I rather suspect that was the point. Anyway, we don't know, but somebody else might. We'll need to find out where this safe is, too. Maybe one of the staff would be able to help there. I suppose they kept this round in case it was needed to unstick a valve or something. Could have done with that earlier. Well, we have it now. That's the main thing. Unfortunately, I don't have the ability to hold my breath for long periods of time. If I'm going out there, I'll need a way to breathe. How marvellous! A pipe organ inside a submarine! Goofy was quite the polymath. Frumpel, you play the piano. Would you like to give this a try? Well, I'm sure I could play it, but I'm not really in the mood at the moment. Let's give this a go, then. Wait, this might be dangerous. Let me stand back first, then you can do it. Thank you for your concern, my friend. Well, look at that. It's full of gunpowder. I'm going to take a small quantity of gunpowder in this envelope. Blimey, I'm going to keep in distance for a bit. Don't want to get myself all blown up if you drop the stuff. A little elbow grease is all that's needed for this, I think. Giraffes don't have elbows, do they? Well, either way, this seems to be doing the job. Hello? Is anybody in here? I'm sure I heard movement. I say, come out and show yourself, you bounder. I can't see... no. Wait, over there, there's somebody heading towards us. Very, very slowly. Greetings, I am Lord Winklebottom and this is my associate, Dr. Frumple. You are take it to Ambrose, the butler. Oh, thank heavens you found me, my lord. I've been trapped up here all night. What the blaze has happened to you, old thing? Oh, some, some ne'er-do-well shut me in after I disturbed them snooping around up here. Tell us, who was it? 
I do apologize, my lord, but I'm not feeling too well after my ordeal. Would you be so kind as to let me rest a while before I talk about it? Oh, not at all, old chap. We shall come and see you in the servants' quarters presently. Very good, my lord. Thank you. That's disappointing. I was hoping we'd find a criminal up here or something. Maybe we have. What, the butler did it? Rather unlikely, what? Just once I'd like it to be the case, though. Now, what's under here, I wonder? <gasps> oh, I say! My word, what on earth is it? And what has you so uncharacteristically blithesome, my friend? Don't you know what this is? It's one of those machines for showing, well... Well, you know... I honestly have no idea. It shows pictures, uh, photographs, you know, of, of animals. Animals who aren't wearing any. Any what? Well, anything. Uh, at all. They're, they're completely undressed. Or, or so I'm told. I never thought I'd actually see one of these in person. How absolutely ghastly. Doesn't seem to do anything. I think it needs a coin to operate it. I'm sure we can find a coin or two around the place somewhere. Some tape used for sealing up boxes and such like. This trunk is full of various knickknacks, trinkets, old tools and so on. I can't take all of it. Maybe if there's something specific I needed. This will help get a better view under that lake. You can't just stick it on your head though, you know. You'll need to make a seal somehow. Yes, and figure out a way to breathe. Is it even going to fit over that whacking great conch of yours? Tell me about how you got trapped in the attic. Well, sure, it was like this. I was in the attic, sorting through a few of the master's belongings. It's awful messy up there, so I've taken it upon myself to do a spot of spring cleaning. Go on. Well, sir, while I was tidying, somebody else came in and started looting through the boxes. It's dark up there, so they didn't notice me at first. Who was it? Well, alas, that I can't tell you, sir. Much as they didn't see me, I couldn't see very much of them. Most unfortunate. Anyway, I, I must have made a sound because I startled them. I tried to give chase, but they ran out the door, slamming it shut. Must have done some damage because it got jammed. The rotter locked the door at the bottom of the stairs, too. I suppose they must have thought old Ambrose here saw them and wanted to keep him out of the way, at least for a short while. But what were they looking for, I wonder? Ambrose, I regret to inform you that your master is deceased. I, I know, sir. Ms. Clutterbuck was kind enough to break the news to me. Do you have any idea who the rotter might be? Alas, no, sir. My master was a kind soul. It's hard to imagine anybody wishing him harm. We have reason to believe there may be a safe in the house somewhere. No, my lord. Leastways, not as far as I'm aware. The master kept his paperwork in his study, but there's no safe in there. Well, this is frustrating. I mean, just what is the point of a combination if we don't have the safe to go along with it? Thank you, Ambrose. One of those newfangled gramophone players. The music plays through this trumpet. Modern technology is wonderful. Just look how tiny it is. I can't remove this trumpet. It's held in place with a small screw. This trunk is full of various knickknacks, trinkets, old tools and so on. Let me just check through the tools. Yes, there's a small screwdriver in here. I'll take this. Mm -hmm. 
This screwdriver fits perfectly. Ah, yes, here we are. Looks like you've come up trumps, eh? Uh. Perhaps this trumpet would help with your hearing. How dare you call me a strumpet? I've never been so offended in all my days. Uh, no, madam, I said trumpet. Now you're just mumbling, you young reprobate. Look, why don't you give me that trumpet you're holding so I can hear you better? <sighs> Greetings, madam. Well, good day to you. Glad to see somebody around here has manners. Nobody else has said a word to me. I have reason to believe you might have accidentally placed a quantity of coins into your bill. Oh my word! However did these get here? Well, perhaps you should take them, darling, and let us not make any further mention of it. Ugh, they're all wet. Here, Frumple, you're more used to bodily fluids than I. You keep these, and I'll just take the one we need. Oh, charming. I wonder if you might borrow your sewing kit. Well, I suppose so. Just as long as you return it. Take what you need from my bag. Don't think the old bird will want it back after I've been using it to serve the body. It seems to me, Dane, that you're making something of a habit of purloining items that don't belong to you. And you're a damn thief. Oh, darling, it's true, it's true. I just can't help myself. So many pretty, shiny things. They'd be happier with me, don't you think? I'm doing it for them. I see. It's really not acceptable behaviour, though. Everybody's allowed one dirty little habit, aren't they, darlings? It's such a little thing, really. They make such a fuss about it. They? The theatre owners said I'd ruined the play. It was the mere cats of Venice. <laughs> well, how was I to know they needed all three of those silly boxes? I left them one, but the others were so sparkly. <laughs> I just had to have them, darlings. I had to. You mean you stole props in the middle of the play? I take it they fired you. Yes, darling. They replaced me. Replaced me. And it was all hush hush, of course, but I didn't work in theatre again. These days I'm lucky to get booked for a cabaret night at the Darby and Joan Club. Most distressing, I'm sure. To think my career would meet such an ignoble end. Oh, darlings, you should have seen me in my prime. I did all the greats Shakespeare, the primates of Penzance, waiting for Doggo. Oh, I was marvellous, darlings. Simply marvellous. Farewell, Dame Celia. Dame Celia's haberdashery bag. Knitting, sewing, wool, threads and such like. Right then, I suppose you'll need to perform this autopsy. Let me take the needle and thread and I'll get on with it. Right, I'll just get ready. I'm not really sure about this apron. Oh well, here we go then. Is that it? Yes, all done. He was murdered all right. Salt water poisoning. Somebody must have tainted the water in his pipe network. And salt water would kill him? Yes, he's a freshwater animal. Couldn't survive in salt. Can you estimate the time of death? Poor chap probably only died shortly before the maid found him, but the salt could have been put into the system hours earlier. There's no way to know when the killer struck. So we know how he was killed, but not when. Uh, that makes it hard to nail down a suspect. If it could have been done at any time, anybody could have done it. Blast! Time for a bit of detective work then. Talk to suspects, fill up the old notebook, what? Indeed. There's a villain on this island, and it's up to us to bring him, or her, to justice. Come, Frumple, the game is a hoof. Ah, 
I'll just pop this in here and... It's working. It's working. Let me see, dash it all. I say, there's a there's a nude fellow in a bath. You know, he, he looks somewhat familiar. I... Well... Uh... Well, I'll be jiggered. I think perhaps we should endeavour to never watch that again. Ever. Yes, quite quite so, old thing. Quite, quite so. Ah, Reverend, there's something rather delicate I wish to discuss with you. <laughs> Quiet, Frumpel. What is it, my son? Well, uh, that is to say... <laughs> you were in a dirty movie. <gasps> ah, bugger. I just knew it would come out at some point. You don't deny it. Would that I could, but no. I feared Guilfrey had discovered my secret. I suppose that's why we're all here. So he can reveal the terrible truth to the world. Surely not. Guilfrey wouldn't do something like that. And why shouldn't he? Maybe he felt that it was the right thing to do, or maybe he was going to ask for money to keep my secret. In any event, perhaps I should be punished for my sordid past. I needed the money, you see. I was young and foolish. Ah, uh, the old church roof again. Couldn't you run a tombola or something? I hadn't taken up the cloth then, you understand. In fact, in many regards, this is my way of atoning for that sin. Well, don't worry, Reverend. Your secret is safe with us. Oh, is it? That's a shame. It's a blasted funny story. Reverend, could we talk about the incident? What can you tell us about the incident last night? Alas, not a jot. I arrived here and went to my room for some peace and quiet before the big event. By the time I came down, Poor Gilfrey had already passed. You saw nothing unusual. I wish I could help you, but no, I'm afraid I did not. Well, goodbye for now, Reverend. God be with you, my son. If we could talk about the incident for a moment. What can you tell us about Gilfrey's death? Nothing, I'm afraid. I wasn't in the mansion at the time. I live elsewhere on the island. I prefer the solitude. It allows me to focus on my work. How was your relationship with Gilfrey? I was very grateful to him for offering me work. Many people aren't quite so open-minded, you know. You don't know of anybody who would wish him harm? Not at all. He wasn't exactly outgoing, at least in the time I knew him. But you got along with him well. As well as could be expected. Like most people, he underestimated me. I'm capable of far more than the work he allowed me to do, Mr Winklebottom. But I'm used to being underappreciated. Because you're, uh, d uh d you know... Indeed. Not the sort of work a woman is supposed to do, don't you know? I have to work twice as hard as the others for a quarter of the recognition. Most frustrating, I'm sure. And on top of that, I can't even get a lab coat my size with pockets in it. It's just infuriating. Thank you, Miss Price. Thank you, Ambrose. Well, he seems dead to the world. How does he seem to you, Frumpel? Poor fellow is knackered. He'll be right as rain after a bit of rest, though. We should leave him be. Maybe I'll take this vase. Why? Want to stick your head in it again to get the last bit of stalk out of it? Now, about the incident. What can you tell us about Gilfrey? I don't know him at all. No idea why he invited me. Truth be told, 
When I saw that journalist, my blood ran cold. Why? A lady has secrets, darling. Things she might want to keep away from her adoring public. I was worried Gilfrey might have discovered something about me and was planning on sharing it with the world. Do you know anything about what happened? Not a thing, darling. I hid away in here when I arrived. It gets so tiresome being in public, you know. So many questions, demands for autographs and all that. Well, since you mention it, I, I have a piece of paper here. Maybe you could... Rumpel, this is not the time. Farewell, Dame Celia. Madam? About the incident. How well did you know Gilfrey? Aristotle, not well. I knew dear Ethelberta for many years, almost since I was a Creer. I remember she was so excited when Aristotle proposed to her. He always seemed such a kind soul. Then you don't know why anyone would have done him in? Gracious, no. Oh, please, find out what caused this terrible tragedy, Lord Winklebottom. I fear his soul will not rest until you do. What do you know about the incident? I have tried to speak to the spirits, but there is a veil over these events. All is cloudy to me. A load of rot. Rumpel, do be polite. Oh, maybe you're right, Doctor. Recently, I find myself wondering if my powers are real after all. Perhaps it's all in my head. You're doubting your abilities. I might not be the only one. Think about it. An animal of science brought me here. Maybe he didn't believe either. Maybe he planned to put me to the test. If he did, I don't know that I would have passed. Thank you for your time, madam. Perhaps we should discuss the incident. Do you have any idea who would want to kill poor Gilfrey? Not a clue, old thing. Not a clue. He had no legal problems. Nothing that could suggest a motive? Nothing that I knew about, and I would have known. How about the old will? There's always a big kerfuffle about the will in cases like this, at least in my experience. Mm, nothing out of the ordinary. With his wife dead, just about everything goes to Constance. Just about everything? Oh, there was an amount set aside for the staff, to ensure they were well looked after. Not enough to kill for, though. And what can you tell us about what happened to Gilfrey? Hard to say, old thing. I mean, there was no shortage of folks coming and going, so it really could have been anybody. Quite the collection of characters, I think you'll agree. You don't know anybody else here? Not one of them. I've known Gilfrey for years, but not socially. I just dealt with his legal matters. Thank you, Mr. Spode. We have reason to believe your father might have owned a safe. Oh, th that's right, he did. I say, we've been over every blasted inch of that house and I've not seen one anywhere. You wouldn't, Dr. Frumpel. Father hid it. It's behind a painting in the drawing room. You won't get into it, though. Even I don't know how it opens. Father wouldn't go near it when others were in the room. So how do you know about it? One time, when I was just a duckling, I snuck into the room while he had the safe open. He didn't see me, thank goodness. I don't think even the staff know it's there. I can't imagine what he kept in it. Thank you, Miss Gilfrey. Most interesting. Perhaps we could discuss your family. Do you happen to know if there's a particular tune or song your parents used to enjoy together? Why, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. A song called Waddling in the Moonlight. Mother used to play it on the organ. I haven't thought about that for years. Thank you, miss. Farewell, Miss Gilfrey. If we could discuss the incident last night. Do you know anything about the circumstances of Gilfrey's death? Not a jot, old thing. I mean, any one of us could have done it, couldn't we? People coming and going for this big event. I say, it could even have been you. 
Or Dr. F here. How oh, dare you, sir. I'm a doctor. I would never. Steady on, old thing. He was just making a point. How well did you know Admiral Gilfrey? Never met the fellow. I mean, Connie has talked about him, of course, but we never actually met. So you don't know who might have wanted to kill him? Not a clue, old thing. Isn't it usually a family thing? Inheritance and all that. Alas, his only family is poor Miss Gilfrey. And you, once you're married, of course. Right, yes, I suppose so. If he'd allowed the marriage, of course. <laughs> I don't think the old boy approved of me, truth be told. Like my own family, I suppose. I say, you're not suggesting we had anything to do with this, are you? I'm not suggesting anything at the moment, sir. Mr. Spode mentioned Constance's inheritance. It would be rather substantial, I believe. Oh, rather. I mean, jolly rotten luck and all, but she'll be a rich woman now. And you a rich man, if you're to marry her. <gasps> I say, well, that's a fine thing, isn't it? Dashed rude of you, old thing. What exactly are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything, just pointing out the facts. Well, you can get that idea out of your head right away. The nerve of you. I mean, really, it's just too much. Thank you, sir. Seems that I might have a use for this after all. I can use this packing tape to attach the hose pipe to the helmet. A bit more packing tape and this helmet should now fit over my snout. Well, I've modified this helmet to be suitable for a giraffe, so it's time to head out. Rumble, you can close the airlock behind me and I'll attach the hose to the vessel's air supply. The hose is held in place with packing tape, that hose. Not that it matters. That vase will probably drop off the front before the hose detaches. I'm really starting to feel that you have no confidence in my abilities. No, no, I'm sure everything will be fine. I'm just saying it's a good job I know the kiss of life, that's all. Right, here we go then. How do you do, good sir? And how are you this fine day? Oh, uh, hello! None too clever, truth be told. Got myself stuck in this blasted wine. All tangled up down the old tentacle, don't you know? I say, I'm absolutely ghastly for you. I say this submarine is really quite a splendid vessel, isn't it? Well, not exactly my kettle of fish, you know. But I suppose for you land purpose, it's a useful contraption. I say, do you want me to help detangle you from that stuff? Might be a bit tricky for me down here, mind. Oh, that would be most splendid. Thank you kindly. I'll just pop up to the service when we're done here, then. Goodbye for now, old thing. I'll see you back topside, as they say. Thanks, old boy. Much appreciated, I'm sure. Well then, Frumple, we know the tune you need to play. Oh, very well, if you insist. Let's see now. a piece of paper shot out of the pipe when you played that last note. Thought it sounded a bit off. Hmm, let's take a look at this. It says, where we met, where we got engaged, where we married, where Constance was born. I'm not sure this is a great deal of help, but it must connect to this safe somehow. Let's have a look now. Oh, this will come off easily if I just cut it into a few pieces. Carefully you don't prod him too hard. I'd like to for a patient once. Tried to give him a reflex test by hitting one of his tentacles with a hammer, and he squirted his filthy ink all over me. I can hear you, you know. Right, that's done the trick. 
I say, what is this wire stuff anyway? Nobody really knows. You find it sometimes under the water. Not a blessed clue where it came from or what it's made from, but it's almost invisible. You don't know it's there until it's too late. It must be animal made, but I can't imagine its purpose. Well, you seem to be free now, old chap. Thanks awfully. I'll be toddling off then. Blasted nuisance. I don't normally come this close to shore, but I was trying to keep away from a ship out at sea. Blasted thing nearly ran into me. Going like the clappers it was, trying to get through that storm. How peculiar. Did you recognise the ship? No, never seen it before. These waters are usually so quiet. They seem very keen to get here, but I don't think they managed it there. The storm was too severe. They're still out there off the coast now, as if they're waiting for something. All seems a bit odd to me. What knows what anyone wants with this desolate little place? Well, farewell then. Goodbye, old chap. Thanks awfully for the help. Perhaps we could discuss your family. Do you know much about how your parents met or where they were married? Uh, not a great deal, I'm afraid. I know they met on one of my father's expeditions in Africa, but not much beyond that. What about their wedding or your own birth? <laughs> I can't help you, Lord Winklebottom. They moved around so much, you see, and, and had so many stories. You know, I'm not even sure where I was born. Is that strange? Thank you, miss. Farewell, Miss Gilfrey. Madam? You knew Ethelberta quite well, I believe. Oh, yes. She was a dear, dear friend to me. I wonder, do you know anything about the circumstances of their matrimony? Alas, I was unable to attend their wedding as I was on a two-year-long spiritual retreat. I left shortly after their engagement. I'm not even sure where they wed in the end. They travelled the globe together, so it could have been anywhere. Do you know where they were when they got engaged? Oh, indeed I do. It was on one of their expeditions somewhere in South America. She was so excited. Such a sad end. If I take one comfort from all this, it's that at least they are together again, and on a very great new adventure. Thank you for your time, madam. A curious box. Oddly, it seems to be fixed in place. It appears, however, that parts of the map itself might actually move slightly. We may be able to make use of this wedding photograph. Careful, old thing. You're getting nearly as bad as that pilfering pelican. Maybe this might help with finding the information we need. I believe these are used to see into the future. Rather a pity they can't see into the past so we could find out what happened to Gilfrey. I say, Frumpole, I can see a mist starting to form in this. No, old boy, that's just your monocle steaming up because of the heat from the fire. Oh, then we probably shan't get the answers this way. Madam? Thank you for your time, madam. Turning to the incident, then. Are you aware of anybody who might have had a grudge against Gilfrey? Well, my lord, Pumphrey seemed most vexed of late. Said he overheard the master discussing getting rid of somebody on the telephone. He thought it was him because of an incident in the vegetable garden. But I'm sure it wasn't. I can't think what he overheard. Please tell us in detail what you know about the incident. 
Well, my lord, as you know, I discovered the master dead a, a short while before you arrived. The other guests were here and I've been helping them to their rooms. I went to find the master and there he was, dead. Well, oh, it was horrible. And you didn't see anything strange before that? Well, at the time, I thought it odd that Ambrose wasn't helping with the guests. Oh, but I never dreamed he'd been locked up there in the attic all that time. Miss Clutterbuck, it strikes me you might have had a somewhat uneasy relationship with the victim. Oh no, sir. The master was very kind to me. Not as kind as you'd have liked there. <gasps> I suppose I can't blame him. A person in his position couldn't be seen with somebody like me. It just wouldn't be proper. Well, quite so. I fancy I might have resented it for it a bit. Oh, my lord. If only things had been different. Did you ever discuss this with him? Perhaps he might have felt the same way you did. Oh, my lord. I, I just couldn't. Oh, the shame of it. Thank you, Miss Clutterbuck. There is apparently a safe behind this painting, but I can't see any way to get to it. The painting is fastened solidly to the wall. Gotta be some way to get it open somewhere around here. You know, Thrumple, I'm not sure we have all the information we need to crack this puzzle. Reverend, could we talk about the incident? I wonder if we could discuss what you were doing last night. Why? Whatever do you mean? Well, we found your prayer book on the stairs to the attic, the same attic where Ambrose disturbed someone and got himself shut in. You can't think I would do such a thing. I'm an animal of God, Winklebottom. I would never... And yet, we found something up there that was of great interest to you, as you know. All right. I admit that I was trying to find that wretched machine... I thought I could destroy it and save my good name, but I heard somebody coming up the whole stairs, so I darted out of there and hid in the study. I suppose I dropped my book then. So you never actually went into the attic? No, I swear I didn't. And I certainly didn't harm poor Aristotle. Thank you, Reverend. That'll be all for now. Well, goodbye for now, Reverend. God be with you, my son. Hold on a moment, Frumple. Let's take stock. I'm rather afraid we're not getting anywhere with this investigation. It does seem like a bit of a tricky one even for you. We have plenty of suspects, but little proof. Quite. We seem to have got everything we can out of interrogating people, but we're still no closer to knowing who did it. It's so infuriating. Pity old Gilfrey didn't let you know in advance what his plans were. Might have given us a clue as to why someone was so intent on stopping him. We just lost touch over the years. He was busy with research, me with my work, and now it's too late. I should have made more of an effort. Steady on, old chap. You weren't to know. That's just how life is sometimes. I just need to solve this case. Catch the fiend who murdered my friend. I say, what if we could get the rotter to expose themselves somehow? Yes, but how? Oh, but wait a moment. Yes, it, it could just work. Madame Lavinia, she's the key. If she could summon Gilfrey's spirit, he could name the murderer. Um, well, I don't want to burst your bubble, old thing, but, well, that's a load of old tosh, isn't it? There's no such thing as ghosts and spirits. Honestly, Winklebottom, you confound me at times. Of course, we know it's nonsense, but the killer may not. If we can make it look authentic, a seance might cause the killer to reveal himself. If he thinks old Gilfrey's about to finger him, he'd have to escape, or else own up before he was accused. So all we have to do is fake a seance and wait for the killer to react? Genius. Or insanity. Honestly, I'm not sure which. Perhaps both, my friend. Right, we should talk to our friendly medium about this. Madam? Madam, we may have a need of your, um, talents to help us solve this case. My talents? Whatever can you mean, Lord Winklebottom? Witchcraft. Voodoo. What whatever it is you call it. You know, having a chinwag with fellows who have kicked the bucket. You really must have a wonderful bedside manner, Frumple, but as my candid colleague suggests, we wish to have discourse with the deceased. You mean a seance? Oh, I don't know. They are difficult to perform. I'm not sure that I have the strength or the ability come to that. Please, madam, you must. This may be our only chance to catch the killer. And I think you might be surprised by just how effective you are. Oh, 
Very well, but I can't promise you'll get the answers you seek. We will need the others here to join Paws with us. Let me know when you are ready. Just so we know, what exactly will happen in this little shindig? I will ask for three signs. First, a chill in the air, which will indicate a presence. Next, a ringing bell, so we know the spirit is here. Finally, a burst of flame as the spirit shows its power, so we know the connection is strong. And that's all? No, then the spirit must show itself to us. It will appear in the room. Blimey, how are we going to arrange all that? Thank you for your time, madam. I don't wish to ruin a perfectly good sheet, but needs must. This will make quite a flash if it hits the fire. Now I shall be able to open this window from a distance. If I attach the wire to the hand, then run it around here, I can make the chime ring from a distance. I'll attach a bit of wire to this envelope. That's all of the wire used up. Madam? Well, madam, we are ready to start the seance. Very well. You gather the others, and I'll prepare. Firstly, if the spirits are here, we should feel a chill in the room. Spirits, come to us now. with us. Chime a bell so that we may know. Good, good, spirits. Show us your power. Light up this room with flame. Spirits, manifest your physical form. Show yourselves to us. Oh. Now, Frumble, it's your turn. Uh, I, uh, I mean, woo, I am a scary ghost. Woo. <laughs> ah. Frumple is lurking in the corner of the room. He doesn't approve of this sort of thing. In this light, you could almost mistake him for a lost soul. Good, good. It worked. The spirits are here. Tell us, spirit, do you have a message for us? Oh, um, yes, I'll say. And what is the message? Well, I'm I'm jolly cross about being killed and all that, and, and I'll tell you all who the Blessed Rotter is if they don't own up right this instant. And I'll probably haunt them for all time, too. Does anybody in the circle wish to respond to the spirit? Oh, go on. Oh, well, I, I suppose I'll be off then. Goodbye. Oh, well, I suppose we are finished here. It seems the spirits were unable to help us. Such a pity. I really felt like there was a presence manifesting this time. Well, we did our best. I was rather splendid, wasn't I? As I say, we did our best. I must say I'm rather at a loss to know what to do now. If only the sounds had achieved something. Good grief, what the dickens is that? Winklebottom, I don't like this. No, not one bit. Steady on, old thing. It seems harmless. I, 
I wonder, could Madame Lavinia's seance have actually worked? No, this is wrong, Blasted. Unholy. I want no part of this. I wonder, though, this is Ethelberta's grave. Could it possibly be? Greetings, sir, uh, madam. No longer here. Just memories. I shall be doing my best to wipe this horror from my own memory, that's for sure. You, I take it, are a ghost? A spirit? Of Ethelberta? I remember Ethelberta. Nothing more. Seems like we might need to jog her memory if we'd get any sense from her. I remember a flash, a child. Then I was blown here on the wind. Huh, typical. She missed out my bit. Well then, uh, madam, uh, thank you for your time. Not much time now. I remember her. Who else should I remember? Perhaps you remember this. My dear Aristotle, how could I forget? We were wed in New York. How I missed him. Perhaps you remember this? Sweet Constance, how could I forget? Born in Paris, such happy days. I do believe we now have the information we need to crack the code. Jove, I think we've done it. Well, well, what do we have here? Maybe now we'll find out what was going to happen here. Well then, let's see what we have here. I say, that skull is a bit strange. Never seen anything quite like it. Close to a primate skull, but not any species I know. There are papers in here too. This must be what Price was looking for. Let's take a look. Well, what have you found? I'm afraid that a lot of the technical mumbo jumbo is rather beyond me, but it would appear that this skull is the key to it all. He discovered it on one of his expeditions and has done a lot of work analysing it. And he was planning to announce this discovery to the world? Apparently so, but I'm not clear on why he thought it so important. I think he wanted help with the announcement, or guidance maybe. Hence inviting religious and spiritual representatives, a journalist, a popular entertainer, all people who could help him get a message out. And we're rather popular public figures too, of course. But look, Winklebottom, I'm sure this is all very interesting, but it doesn't help us with the question of who bumped off the poor chap. You're quite right, as always, Frumple. I think perhaps we need to talk to all the suspects at once and solve this crime once and for all. You don't mean... Yes, Frumple, let's gather the suspects together in the drawing room. Oh, I do enjoy this part. As you all know, my good friend Admiral Gilfrey died last night. After investigating his death, myself and Dr. Frumple have determined that it was no accident. Somebody wanted Gilfrey silenced, and they wanted it so badly that they'd resorted to murder. And what's more, that person is in the room with us right now. Yes, I think that was rather implied, Frumple. Now, all of you were invited here by Gilfrey, and several of you had ideas why that was so. All of you were wrong. Now, to recap. Yesterday, guests started arriving here. At some point, we don't know when, somebody dumped a large quantity of salt into Gilfrey's water supply, an action that ultimately led to his death. Rotten way to go. Now, as well as killing Gilfrey, it seems the criminal was also looking for something. They were searching the attic when they were disturbed by Ambrose, the butler. They ran and locked him in in order to escape without anybody sounding the alarm. They escaped the house, briefly dropping the key to the cellar, which they'd also locked to hide their crime. Something must have gone wrong, though, as we know that nobody is missing, so they presumably returned here after failing to escape the island. Well, go on, then. Who was it? Well, Frumple, that's the interesting question. I'm afraid that right now I don't know the answer. But let us examine the facts and discuss the subjects one at a time. Reverend Peabody, we know that you went up to the attic at one point, and we also know what you have been looking for up there. You have a secret, and you were terrified Gilfrey would reveal it. <gasps> but you can't mean... I, I didn't... No, I think not. So what about Beryl? 
You've worked for Guilfrey for years, but felt hurt that he didn't reciprocate the feelings you had for him. Perhaps you finally snapped and decided that if you couldn't have him, nobody could. <gasps> oh, my lord! I never... No? Well then, let's turn to Sir Winslet. You believe that Guilfrey didn't approve of you. In point of fact, you were wrong about that, and the reason you're here is that he valued you as a journalist and wanted you to help with his announcement. Oh, I see. Plus, of course, there's the matter of the inheritance. You are not a rich cat, but Constance is now a very wealthy lady. With a supposed impediment to your union out of the way, your money woes are over. <gasps> now, now, come on, old thing, be serious. Very well, let's move on to Dame Celia. With the narcissism typical of members of the acting profession, you actually believe that Guildford invited everybody here to reveal your closely guarded secret. Is this enough of a reason for you to kill? Will you stop going on about my bill, young man? There's nothing in it! Stupid bat left the trumpet in the other room. Well, no matter. We still have other suspects, such as Madame Lavinia. Oh, no. You can't suspect me. And why not? You believe, incorrectly as it turns out, that you are a fraud. Guilfrey, a rational chap, might want to expose this to the world. Maybe fearing this, you took matters into your own hooves. But I... I... I'm not finished yet. We still have Miss Price to consider. Hmm. Of course you'd forget about me until the end. You worked with Guilfrey, helped him with his research. Maybe you feared he would take all the credit for your work. After all, he took your notes and papers. Perhaps a lifetime of being underappreciated boiled over and you did away with him. Perhaps. Is that what you really think, Mr Winklebottom? No, probably not. However, that is just about everybody, except for Mr Spode here. I suppose there could be something we don't know about Guilfrey's legal matters that could give you a motive? Hmm. Could be, old boy. But there isn't. No, Spode has been Guilfrey's solicitor for years. Hard to imagine him suddenly developing a sudden desire to murder him. So what now? Who did it? Who's the killer? I'll tell you. Right now, the killer. The killer is... I don't know. Blast, I was rather hoping they might be gracious enough to expose themselves at this point. Oh, bugger. So what now? More questioning? Well, I... Actually, sir, if you don't mind, I have a question for you. Culver, glad to see you back in the land of the living. What is it? Well, sir, I was just wondering why you keep referring to this fellow as Spode. Because that's who he is, Spode of Spode, Spode and Flabernacle Solicitors. No, he isn't. Look, sir, I spent a lot of time in court giving evidence and what have you. I know Spode, both of them in fact, and this chap isn't him. Damn your eyes. Price! Follow me, now! Good night, everyone. <gasps> Damn it, the lights are out. Somebody, stop them! <laughs> Quickly, Frumple, hurry, we mustn't lose track of them. Easy view to say with those whacking great stilts you call legs. Now where have the buggers got to? This way, they're heading off in the direction of the forest. Now where do we go? I'm sure they came in here. We can't be far behind them, but which way did they go? There must be some clue. Finally, a way through this wretched forest. Crumple, look. What's that coming through the mist? I say, I don't much care for that thing. What on earth is it? My God, Frumple, it's an abomination. He's making a run for it. After him, he may lead us to Price and our imposter, Spode. I'm all covered in dried twigs and leaves from the forest. No sign of that creature, or Price or Spode, but they must surely have come this way. They must be inside this lighthouse. We've got them trapped. The doors are locked tight with a padlock. We'll have to get it open somehow. We have to find them. This is locked tight. I can't get it off. 
Remember how the Limehouse Lizards cracked open that safe containing the Duchess's pearls? We could do the same. Blast the, uh, blasted thing off. Problem is, I don't have anything to blast it open with. Here, I still have some of that gunpowder we took from the caves. Thought I'd grab some extra just in case. You can have the rest of the contents in my pockets too, in case it's of any use. Right, I'm going to pour this gunpowder into the padlock. I'll place some of the thread from this sewing kit into the lock and run it a safe distance. I can probably use these to start a fire, but I'll get my hooves blown off if I ignite the gunpowder directly. I need a fuse. I can generate a bit of heat with this tinder, but the fuse isn't lighting. I need to make it more flammable. Okay, I soaked the fuse in the last dregs of oil from this lantern. Now it should light. Okay, hopefully I can use these twigs to generate a bit of a spark. Aha! It's going. Stand back, old thing. Who's over the old lugs, what? Almost there now. This is it. This is... The padlock is off. Finally, I can open this hatch. My god, Frumble, what is this place? Just what has been happening here? I say, Winglebottom, who's this unfortunate figure? <laughs> Quickly, Frumble, we should get this gag out of his mouth. Right, old boy. Soon have this out of your mouth. Oh, oh, thank you, sirs. I rather feared my number was up. What on earth is going on here? That was rather going to be my question. May I ask with whom I have the pleasure of conversing? Oh, how, how rude of me. Uh, my apologies. I, I am Ulysses Spode of Spode, Spode and Flabernacle. At your service, sir. I say, you're the fellow that toad chap is impersonating. Not that he tricked me for a second, you understand. He tied me up, just as I arrived at the island. Asked all sorts of questions about me and my client, Mr. Gilfrey. You know the Admiral? Yes, indeed. And I'm afraid I have some rather sad news in that regard. However, right now we must urgently search his laboratory. We're really in an awful hurry. Oh, be careful. There's something ghastly going on in here. Have you seen that thing, that creature, all hairless and pallid? Oh, never in all my days have I set eyes on such a thing. We'll be careful, and we'll be back to set you free as soon as possible. Oh, don't mind me, old thing. I'll just wait here until you're ready. What on earth are these things? They're abhorrent, blasphemous creatures. Ugly blighters, too. I wonder, could these be related to that strange skull Gilfrey found? Their noggins would seem to be about the right shape, though these poor chaps don't look like the healthiest specimens of whatever species they are. That creature outside, though. Are these previous attempts to create that thing? Is that even possible? Dashed if I know. I can help chaps keep hold of life, but creating it from nothing? Fellows that did that would be a damn sight cleverer than me, that's for sure. Well, this doesn't help us with our immediate concern in any case. Various chemicals and concoctions, a cure for what ails ya? Wouldn't go sipping those willy-nilly. Some nasty stuff there. We can't go back now, they must be in here. Good grief, what macabre experiments have occurred down here? This equipment looks like it can deliver a heck of a shock to the system. Might be useful to kickstart a chap's ticker. Or start one up from scratch, perhaps. Blast, it's locked. Spode and Price could be through here. Bloody locked doors. As soon as we get back to London, I'm getting one of those skeleton keys that Charlie Weasel used for breaking into all those nightclubs. What on earth? Why has the light gone out? Ow! I say, what was that? Ouch! Something bloody well stabbed me. Gentlemen. Price, what's going on here? And where is Spode? Oh, Mr. Winklebottom. 
I'm sorry I had to come to this. Why did you have to start poking your noses into things that don't concern you? I just wanted to be left alone with my work, but you wouldn't let me, would you? The same as Gilfrey wouldn't let me. I don't understand. Are you saying you killed Gilfrey? I didn't, as it happens. But does it matter, really? He had to be stopped. He was going to tell the world about my discovery. Stop my experiments. That creature? It is not a creature. It is a human. I say, a what? A human. Homo sapiens, if you want its scientific name. Oh, you'd find them fascinating, Doctor. Before the world as we know it existed, they ruled the Earth, you know, built great cities and fought terrible wars. They were like gods. Sounds like you want to take their place. You're playing god. I have recreated them. Just a tiny trace of biological matter on that skull was all I needed. From just that. I was able to create cells, and from cells, a whole body. Took you a few goes, though, by the looks of it. Nobody's perfect, Mr. Frumpel. The mistakes were unfortunate, but an essential step in my work. And the final result, well, he is perfect. I'm starting to see why Gilfrey wanted to stop you. It was you he was trying to get rid of, wasn't it? He wanted you off the island and your work stopped. He didn't understand wanted to just tell the world about everything, they would have taken my creation from me. Lucky for me that others wanted the secret kept too. The imposter, Spode. He's their representative. He's just here to help get me and my work away from this place. His organisation is most insistent that this discovery is kept secret from the general public. They, at least, appreciate me. It was him, wasn't it? He poisoned Gilfrey to keep him quiet. No, sorry. That's enough. I've just been keeping you talking long enough for the poison to kick in. It should be well into your system by now. Can you feel it? Oh, I- I'm feeling a bit peaky, old thing. Me too, Frumple. I'm sorry I had to do it. But you would have stopped me, wouldn't you? I have to get off the island with my work like we planned before the wretched storm ruined everything. Wait, stop. Let's discuss this like civilised animals. It's not too late. Sorry, Mr. Winklebottom. The boat should be here by now, and you've most kindly found the papers Gilfrey took from me. We've been searching high and low for these. And you've brought the skull, too, I see. I'll have those. Wait, I... No. Frumple. Frumple, snap out of it. I don't feel so good, old thing. Quickly, we need to find an antidote. I need you, Dr. Frumple. Lots of pretty bottles. I wonder if any of these would help with my head. I'm feeling frightfully woozy right now. Ah, doctor. I need a doctor. Come on, old boy. You have to help. There are lots and lots and lots and lo- Oh, I'm repeating myself. The point is, there must be something we can do with all these chemicals. Give me a moment. I need to think in my head. Ah, I know. Well? Well, I remember my school holidays in summer running through the grass. The colour of the leaves on the trees. Everything was so happy then. I'm not sure this is helpful. It just popped into my head when I was thinking about how to make an antidote. Chin chin, old boy, and down the hatch. Ugh. Hello in there, would you like a nice cup of tea? I say, Frumple, these fellows are being most rude. No manners, that's the problem today. Come on, Frumple, concentrate. Met a chap one day who made the most delicious honey. I got it all over my face and clothes. When Nanny washed it off, it left the bath water such a lovely colour, like liquid sunlight. I hope this tastes better than it looks. No, it was worse. 
I really hope some part of you knows what you're doing here, old thing. One day I stayed out too late and it started to get dark. I stumbled and fell into a ditch. The brambles cut my arms and legs something wicked. The blood stained my lovely white shirt a terrible color. Well, here's mud in your eye, old boy. <laughs> Is there any more, my friend? Eventually, the end of summer came. I had to go back to school and those rotters who called me names. I spent the last day just laying down, looking up at the clear summer sky, hoping the day would never end. Still remember the color even now. Okay, bottoms up. Yeah. Oh, my head. My word, those chemicals tasted absolutely foul. They did the job though, eh? Indeed they did. Well done, my scholarly sidekick. We'd better get a move on though. Catch up with the rogues before they scarper. Yes, come on. Let's head back outside and see what's happening. Spode. Well, no. But I'm sure you know that by now. I thought I'd got away with that, you know. Would have too if not for you meddling mammals. Just needed to play for a bit of time for our boat to arrive and get myself, Price and her creation away from here. You did it, didn't you? You killed Gilfrey. The old fool was going to go public about what he'd found. We couldn't allow that. Why not? What harm would it do? Harm? My dear Winklebottom, it would be catastrophic. So much of what we think of as our society comes from them, you know. The humans. We cannot allow their existence to become public knowledge. And so, just for that, you killed him? No choice. We needed to tie up all the loose ends. Keep him from talking and get Price, her creature, and the research off the island. Only you couldn't, could you? You didn't know about the safe, so couldn't find his papers. And then, having wasted time looking for them, the storm stopped you getting away. Mm, inconvenient, that was. Fortunately, we ran into Spode, and as nobody else knew him, that gave me a convenient cover to carry on looking for the research. A solicitor looking through papers. Nobody would give a second thought. But why not just talk to Gilfie, explain things to him? You didn't need to kill him. Too big a risk. Whatever else the humans were, they made sure everybody knew their place in the world. Kept order. We need that. Our society has been shaped, molded into a replica of theirs to keep our own instincts at bay. Imagine if that got out, it would be chaos. Well, you've buggered it up now, haven't you? We all know, and we're not going to keep quiet about it. Oh, Dr. Frumpel, you and the others are never leaving this island. I'm sorry, but that's how it's got to be. This whole thing goes far deeper than you know. And I'm afraid the two of you are just some more loose ends that I need to deal with. You absolute bounder! <laughs> No! Get off us, you fool! You'll have us all over the edge! From home! No! Well then, Culver, can I offer you a cup of tea before you go? Most kind, sir. Most kind. I say, lovely service, wasn't it? Dr. Frumple would have enjoyed it, I think. Indeed so, indeed so. Reverend Peabody gave a most moving sermon. All of it quick, to my mind. 
But I suppose they know what they're doing. Indeed, the impetuousness of youth, I suppose. Winslow and Constance looked very happy in any case, and Miss Clutterbuck was overjoyed that she called the bouquet. Shame old Frample couldn't be there. Have you seen him today? Not yet. They say he should be out of hospital in a day or so. I think his demands for tea are starting to test the patience of the nurses, truth be told. And he still has no idea how he managed to get back onto the beach after his fall? None at all. I suspect we'll never know. Well, anyway, how goes the case? Still no sign of the fellow who was impersonating Spode? Not a trace of him. Nor this creature you claim to have seen. He almost certainly died in the fall. And Miss Price? Oh, she's being most helpful. We've got a full confession. Honestly, I think she was just happy that somebody was paying attention to her for once. She'll be charged as an accessory to Guilfrey's murder. Well then, I suppose that just about wraps everything up. Well, there is just one thing. Price had these notes on her, and this weird-looking skull. The boys at the yard don't know what to do with them, so I rather thought you might want to keep them. Oh, Inspector Culver, I most assuredly do. Do you think you'll go public with all this? Tell people what you know? That will require some thought. Spode believed our whole society would collapse if people knew the truth, but, you know, I rather suspect we'll continue to muddle on just fine. Well, let me know if you do decide to tell the world. I rather think I might just take a holiday that week. Most wise, Inspector. Well now, how about that cup of tea? Oh, yes. Very kind. And this time, I'll be sure to put the tea in first, just the way Frumpel likes it. Well, old thing, how are you feeling now? Well, not too bad, all things considered. They say I must have cracked my cranium on some rocks when I fell into the water. Doctor says nothing important was damaged, though. Oh, just your head, then. Anyway, have the papers picked up on the case? What are they saying about me? Um, well, I shouldn't worry yourself about that right now. My immediate concern is what to do about the research we found regarding these humans. Spode, or whoever he really was, seemed to think society would collapse if people found out about them. I mean, it's a bit of a shock that these fellows ran the place before us, but look, if they were such clever dogs, what happened to them? Can't be that smart if they wipe themselves out. Gilfrey's research doesn't say. Whatever happened to them, it didn't leave a lot of evidence. Just traces, really, underground or in deep caves. I suppose somebody must have found books or documents and set about moulding our society along the lines of theirs. It must have taken centuries, though. Some kind of secret society shaping the world? Sounds like a bunkum to me. Anyway, what are we going to do about it? We have to tell people, don't we? You know, Frumpel, I rather think we do. We can't keep it secret. If people know the truth, then we can decide for ourselves. There's no reason to follow the path trodden by these long-dead humans. It's our world now, and I believe we have a duty to find our own way in it. Plus, I'm bound to get a mention in the newspaper if we do. Indeed so, Frumpel. Well, I'm going to go and make a few arrangements, and then, once you're fighting fit again, we shall have a big announcement to make. This won't do at all. Send out the word. I want Lord Winklebottom dead or alive.
I, I say, Chabs, any chance you could let me out now? Getting a bit, uh, peckish here now. Chaps? Chaps? <laughs> <laughs>